the crucial thing was that it was Einstein who realized that the quanta were not a characteristic of the atoms. The quanta were a characteristic of light itself. So it wasn't that the atom could only release light in this particular way, it's that the light comprised of something that only consisted of quanta. And he used this insight to explain another phenomenon, the photoelectric effect. And he did this in a paper, received March 18, and published June 9. And its title was on a heuristic point of view about the creation and conversion of light. So let me describe briefly the photoelectric effect and then tell you how Einstein resolved it. Now, solar panels have shown us that sunlight falling on certain materials, and there's a schematic of it down at the bottom right, can eject electrons and cause a current to flow. Uh, what solar panels are about. Um, but there were two puzzles. Increasing the frequency of the light increased the energy of the ejected electrons, but not their number. So increasing the frequency increased the energy, but not their number. And indeed, if the frequency of the light dropped too low, no electrons were emitted. The second puzzle was that increasing the intensity of the light the amount of light increased the number of ejected electrons, but not their energy. Very strange behavior if you look at light from a wave point of view. This should not happen. Einstein's resolution was revolutionary. He broke with a whole century, more than a century, of experimental evidence that suggested that light consisted of waves. He said that one thought of light as consisting of energy quanta, or photons, with energy proportional to their frequency, then we could explain the two puzzles. And here we have here, we've got a material which ejects uh, electrons if light of a certain frequency will fall upon it, potassium, the electrons need two units of energy to escape. The photons of red light don't have enough energy, so no electrons are released. With green light, electrons are released with a certain amount of energy. With blue light, the same number of electrons are released, but with a higher energy. That resolved the first problem of thinking of light consisting of photons, each of the photon having a particular energy. The next question, increasing the intensity of the light, that's the increasing the number of photons coming down, increases the number of electrons, but not their energy. And you can see for yourself that that's the case, that if you have one coming down, it ejects one electron. If you have two coming down, it ejects two electrons, but those electrons are going to have the same energy. So once you move to that quanta based, the photon based, the particle based idea of light, it explains these. People, of course, thought that Einstein's approach, a bit like um, Planck's, was just a mathematical device without physical reality. But then a series of experiments showed that we had to think of light as both waves and particles. And this wave-particle duality lies at the core of the, then, the new quantum mechanics that was developed in the 1920s and which lies at the heart of our understanding of the atomic and the subatomic world.